Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming, and this is my top 10 decks for this format. Uh, first things first, we gotta start with the uh, most popular deck, I would say, right now, which is the cheapest deck right now, the Trap Tricks. Uh, the Structure deck just came out, and this deck is wholesale the best bang for your buck when it comes to entering the meta game. This deck can take games off the best decks very very confidently it's a very cool rank four base strategy that based around trap cards and i can't lie this deck's kind of insane uh it's kind of put trap decks back in the format which is kind of crazy uh for the longest time i don't think a trap deck has been meta since eldridge but now labyrinths in the format trap tricks are in the format trap decks or purple decks are on a rise and i gotta put this deck at number 10 this card uh, this deck is insane uh, how consistent it can do its plays the only issue that this deck has is going into a board this deck can falter not to mention uh the deck can be board break pretty well uh it doesn't have the greatest protection against evenly match and other powerful cards like that but there are sun avalon versions of this deck where they play the whole um what's it called Furion engine in order to make some omni negates to protect their back row uh, those versions, I would say, are much stronger than the normal locals trap tricks player. But the run into them, it's going to be a little harder than you think. Uh, probably one into one every local instead of every three. Just because most people are just be playing the bare minimum basic structure deck. But still, it's a pretty powerful deck and has potential for the future. So right now, it is at number 10. All right, so now to keep the plant train going, we got Naturia Runic. I think Naturia Runic is a very, very powerful and expensive deck, if you count the Runic cards. Uh, the Naturia part of it is dirt cheap, and it is very, very powerful. I'm glad to say that Naturia is a meta deck, and it still continues to be a meta deck, uh, meta deck even into the new format. Runic is definitely keeping this deck alive. It's a very, very powerful. The, Vernal the Vernalizers were in touch. There's a lot of powerful tools that this deck has when it comes to Earth. And the fact that it is an Earth deck is great because the Bestials don't touch this deck. And since it's such a diverse format, this deck has plays going first or second. Uh, this can make a really, really obnoxious uh, turn one board with your Crickets. And going second, it can definitely board break with its Naturia cards. Uh, with the Runic cards, my apologies. And uh, it's in a good, it's in a good spot right now. I would say the only issue is that it doesn't really have any finishers. The Cherry Beast and Barkion are pretty insane for like toolboxing this format, but they don't really have a boss boss monsters, which is my only argument for this deck. So we'll just have to go from there. But overall, very powerful cards, and we'll have to see where it goes from here. All aboard the plant train because we keep going. That's three plant decks in the meta if you haven't noticed uh personally this is how i'd rank them i think rinka or sun avalon it still has the highest ceiling i would say uh runic is probably the most consistently powerful and then i would say uh, of course the cheapest and one of the more trap or control based strategies will be trap trick but runic sun avalon uh, Rika Sun Avalon, my apologies, is still an insanely powerful deck. They haven't had any hits on the list. If anything, they got boosted because of the Trap Trick Structure deck. I don't think enough people are testing out the uh, Rika cards. I think we're going to run into a lot more Rika players once the reprints are finally, uh, what's it called, released. And the newest, uh, what's it called, Gate Guardian set, which comes out this Thursday. Technically, tomorrow it comes out, but it doesn't come out to like your walmart's to like friday but uh, i think uh rika the only thing keeping it out for people playing it or at least play testing it is the price lanes and sun avalon is just a very very powerful engine this deck making a whole bunch of tributes is kind of insane it plays so differently from every meta deck uh, well actually to be honest every meta deck plays differently from most meta decks this format which is kind of cool but uh, sun avalon most in particular it's a plant-based deck that revolves around making a link board that also plays this really cool control base engine that tributes your opponent's monsters. It's a very powerful and interesting deck. I don't think it'll go any further from here just because 
Again, the ceiling is so high, but going second isn't the greatest. But I would definitely say it's a very cool and interesting strategy, and I can't wait for more people to play this deck and to break it even further. All right, so now it's time to talk about my favorite deck, the Punks. I definitely feel like they would fall here. I feel like there's just too many stronger decks in it, but I still love this deck wholeheartedly. I can't cope myself any higher than this until the new Gold Pride cards come out. Then I'll say this deck's the best deck in the format. But until we got that second wave of Gold Pride, I think this is where it falls in the middle of the pack. Uh, it's a very powerful engine, both the Furions and the Punks. But I feel like it's just still too inconsistent. There's still too many little choke points that I can hit this deck. And especially going second into a Cash Tira board. Uh, I feel like this is where they have to land, but when they go first and when they go off, this deck is unstoppable. So I have to put it here just for my love of this archetype, and I will be coming out with that combo tutorial soon enough. I just uh, have been putting it off for a little bit just because I put so much punk content on my videos, but uh, I'll be posting it soon enough. Anyway, hope you all enjoy, and let's go on with the list. All right, so this one's going to be a shocker, but yeah, I have dinosaurs in the middle of the road. Not going to lie, dinosaurs are just kind of insane. My friend Caesar, who hasn't played in like six months, played his first tournament and literally got third place. I don't know if that says anything about how good of a duelist he is or how powerful dinosaurs are, but I feel like dinosaurs are just a slept on deck. Everyone's like, oh, you have to wait to wild survivors. Does anyone forget the crazy boards this deck can make going first or second? I mean, this deck could easily OTK your opponent with Conductor. Also, push it through any board that Cashier tries to build with all the board breakers that exist. Not to mention, going first, it ends on like this stupid, like, five negate board, and it says deal with it. Not to mention, Miscellaneous is crazy. Ultimate Tyrannical Conductor's Book of Eclipse, which just turns off Cashier completely. I think the hardest issue for dinosaurs is if they don't open the board breaker and they got to deal with the macro but other than that this is definitely dinosaurs format to shine i guess branded we'd say oh well book and moon in the fusions don't really do much because they float anyway well that's true but i still feel like dinosaurs are in the middle of the road very very powerful consistent deck that not enough people are just testing or playing with and we just gotta wait till the new wild survivors cards come out to make this deck even more powerful but I feel like this card, this deck is being slept on. I think the dinosaurs are still insane. This includes Dynamorphia, by the way. I just think uh, this is where it would fall. Very, very powerful cards. And I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Alright, so now it's time to talk about the best control deck, I would argue, in the format, which is Labyrinth. This deck is probably the most powerful control deck we got. That isn't counting like some combo wombo deck that does like somewhat control. Labyrinth is just kind of insane on its removal and its card advantage it gets. Uh, this deck must not be slept on. There's a reason why these cards are expensive besides the card art. Uh, Labyrinth is a very scary deck that you will find at every local. At least one player will be playing this deck and they'll be doing well with it. It's not the greatest deck. Back removal still kills this deck completely. But other than that... This card just keeps getting more and more cards to make it better. And as long as trap cards are good, I feel like Labyrinth's going to be a crazy deck going forward until there's a new trap archetype they introduced that outclasses it. But for now, Labyrinth is the big girl, I guess, and is definitely taking a swarm at number five. Let's go on to number four, where we got... All right, it's Cyber Smash Mech time. Uh, this deck is crazy. We all know it. It's one of the best control decks slash combo decks slash mid-range decks in the entire format. This deck can FTK, or not FTK, but it can definitely OTK. It can make a pretty strong, powerful turn one board. There's 20 different variants of it. This deck is kind of insane, especially once that new firewall stuff comes out. <laughs> but I think the only thing keeping Math Mech from being like the third or second best deck in this entire format is just the fact that they have such a weak matchup to Macro Cosmos. Uh, Cash Tira, the fact that it's a macro kind of kills this deck. And the fact that the second next deck is Branded, which is full of Bestials, which also killed this deck, is the only thing keeping Math Mech from literally being one of the best decks in this format. I really do think so. 
I think Mathmec has a great Sprite matchup, even though I think Sprite is still better overall. Uh, I think uh, Brandon and Cash Tier are the only things really keeping his deck from the higher echelons. But number four is still a pretty, pretty powerful slot, especially when his deck completely fell off after Power of the Elements once uh, Tier Elements took center stage. So I'm glad that once Tier dies, Mathmec has rised back again to the format, and we'll have to see where it goes from here. Well, it looks like I was mistaken because this is actually a top 11 list. My apologies. I forgot Sword Soul. Uh, that was a big whoop on me. Uh, it turns out I created Sword Soul, but I forgot to expand the image. So uh, for the longest time, I was like, I only have 9. I need a 10th deck. So hey, here's Sword Soul. I guess you can cut out uh, Trap Trick if you want. I think Trap Tricks is still a pretty powerful deck, though, overall. But we gotta give Sword Souls do do. It, it's actually the fourth best deck. Math Mac, I'm sorry, you're back to number five. But Sword Soul is still pretty insane for uh, the plays you can make. It still makes Baron easy. Evil Long Gun is still one of the best synchros that this deck only has access to. Uh, there's just a lot of cards that uh, Sword Soul has that just kind of help them play through things. Uh, don't get me wrong, they still don't have a great Cash Tira going second package. But board breakers is all you need, and this deck is just uber uber consistent uh, on making really powerful synchros. I say screw you. Not to mention blackout's still an insane card, so I'll leave this at number four. I would say math mech and sword soul are like switch one or the other. But other than that, I feel like this list is still pretty consistent. Let's go on to number three, which we all had to love it. Splite. Now, Splite, I still don't know which one is best deck. I don't think anyone does. We got Gishki Sprite. We got, uh, we got, uh, what's it called? Tri Brigade Sprite. We have Runic Sprite. We have Live Twin Sprite. We just have Sprite, period. There's so many ways to play this deck, and it's kind of insane. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I love it, even though. At the same time, I hate how strong it is, or at least how impressive it was back in the last format. But the fact that Sprite has like 12 different ways to play it is pretty solid. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy how Sprite's doing. I wish the Gishki version took off more. I feel like out of all the four versions I'm showing right now, I think that's the weakest. Just through the fact that uh, Elf Ban kind of does kill that version, even though it's not the, it still exists, but not as good. Uh, I would say if it goes power level, it will go uh, Gishki, then it will go Tri Brigade, and then it's a toss up between Live Twin and Runic. Uh, some people say Runic's the best version, and some people say Live Twin's the best version. And it's really tough to say. Both have their pluses, both have their minuses. Uh, Runic is probably more consistently powerful, but at the same time, it does stop your battle phase, unlike the Live Twins. But Live Twins have popping, but. I don't know. It's really debatable. But overall, really, really powerful decks in general. And hey, we still have pure Sprite too. So who knows? Uh, you tell me in the comments which one is your favorite Sprite build or which one's the strongest Sprite build. But uh, overall, this is what I think. And we'll have to go from there. All right. So now it's time to talk about a deck I should be playing this format, which is Branded. I think Branded is probably one of the best decks this entire format. Probably the best deck. Now, results say Kashtira is the best deck, so spoiler alert, Kashtira is best deck. But personally, Brandon has such a high ceiling, it's ridiculous. The fact they don't really care about the macro cosmos, they, like, they don't mind the uh, banishing cards. The fact that the Bistules are all insane. The fact that Brand Fusion's still at 3. The fact that we got the new Kashtija cards. This deck is just all in all, all kinds of insanity. I really do think Branded is the top echelon of decks. And the only reason why I'm not playing it in this format is just because I played it all throughout tier element format. And I'm kind of a little bored of it, not going to lie. Um, for the longest time, I was playing Punk, and I got a little bored of that. And then I started playing tier elements with the with uh, Branded. And that was what I was doing all throughout tier element format. But now, Branded's probably the second best deck in the format. And I'm refusing to play it just because... Man, I'm so tired of activating Brand Fusion. And I, I love this deck so much, but holy shit, it's been alive for an entire year. Um, I'm, I am I really am happy that this deck is showing its potential. I think all the branded cards are always insane. The fact that people stopped playing it once the Seizu cards came out, I thought was a little crazy. Because I thought the branded had just a higher ceiling. But the Seizu cards are more consistent, and that was, that was my take on it. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. 
you can tell me in the comments. But personally, I've always loved the branded tier element version. But branded pure with just the Cartesia cards with the with the Lubellions and all that stuff. That deck is just all kinds of stupid. The fact that they get an explosion, special summon a like Gizmek from the deck, and just like, literally lock you out again completely is kind of stupid. There's so many ways this deck goes. And honestly, this deck is a 10 out of 10 if it wasn't for our number one. All right, so time to talk about the big elephant in the room, Cash Tira, the most powerful deck in the entire format. Everyone knows it. It has a $500 price tag for a reason. It's the only deck I don't own. This deck is pretty, pretty insane. Uh, the fact that it locks out every zone by like turn three is kind of stupid. The fact that this guy's a macro cosmos that is like pops a card is really stupid. Uh, there's so many things with Cash Tira that are just stupid. And uh, yeah, this deck deserves number one. Uh, even though I feel like Brandon has a higher ceiling, this deck is just consistently more powerful just for the fact that all the zone locking is kind of stupid yeah it doesn't make it negate but give it time so i'm i'm sure someone's gonna put some invoked engine or some negate engine into this deck it doesn't use his normal summon so you tell me how they get a negate they probably will but other than that there is no fault to this archetype this archetype's all kinds of stupid and good god konami hit some cards because this shit ain't fun well, they lock out four zones by turn one. But uh, you tell me in the comments what you would have banned. Oh, not banned. My apologies. What you would say is your top ten. And we'll go from there. See you all next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>